I learned of the vocal cord parasite's existence in literature belonging to the Foundation. It was little more than a theory. The question was, why does only Homo sapiens among all primates have highly developed language? Human versus everything else. The missing link between these was the mystery that gave rise to this theory. I was fascinated by the idea of their existence. In the Dene creation myth, the Neo Dene, who first inhabited the world, were insect-like creatures. I came to imagine... That prisoner doesn't look like the target. Like ...creatures could be humans living in symbiosis with the vocal cord parasites. But I had not the faintest idea of how I could resurrect them. That is when Skullface came to me. What he offered me was not just assistance with my metallic archaea research. He told me the vocal cord parasites really existed. And not only did they exist, they had already been brought back to life in the modern age. An ancient human cadaver host to the parasites of the time. Cypher excavated such a cadaver from a permafrost region and isolated the DNA coding of the vocal cord parasites. Naturally, they were long dead and could not be brought back, but there was an alternate vessel they could use. A relative species of the Pentastomida discovered in China. It had adapted to live in the nasal cavity of animal hosts. But its genetic sequence showed signs of common ancestry with the vocal cord parasites. Ontogenesis. Great. I've updated the info on your eye droid. Take a look. I hope he's all right. The phylogenetic evolution of the entire strain. Cypher used this to effect a reverse evolution of the modern parasite and resurrect the vocal cord parasites. They interpose a developmental mechanism to the ontogenetic stage analogous to when the relative species first appeared, the point at which it split from the vocal cord parasites, forcing its evolution down the other path. The Boss, you've entered a building. Always keep an escape route in mind when you head indoors. If you get surrounded, you'll have nowhere to run. I do not know in detail how Cypher accomplished this. But clearly, they have access to high-level genetic technologies. Skullface said it was the work of a genius woman scientist and that the relative species in question was first discovered by a group once called the Philosophers. I was tasked with modifying the resurrected parasites. He charged me with two demands. First, to add lethality to these organisms that had once lived in peace with man. By unleashing the larvae's latent desire to consume nutrients from the host's lung tissue, making them eat and eat until the lungs were destroyed. Second, to have both male and female inhabit the same host and copulate then and there only when exposed to specific pronunciations continuously over an extended time. What he would do to the Dene if I failed. I had no choice. Originally, the ultimate objective of the ethnic cleansing parasite project was the identification of not only languages, but of actual cultures. Language is deeply connected to ethnicity, but many languages are employed by multiple ethnic groups, and confrontation between those ethnic groups is by no means rare. That's the target. If the kinds of parasites were to be a deterrent against ethnic conflict, they had to distinguish between groups using means other than pure language. The original plan called for this to be achieved by differences in the transmission vector. Each ethnic group has different lifestyle, customs, and eating habits. Uh, now 
Now that's some lateral thinking. Flawless work. You never cease to amaze, boss. Target extraction confirmed. Exfiltrate out of the hot zone by chopper or on land. Using cows as their intermediate host would be ineffective against cultures that abstain from eating beef. But that is a lofty goal indeed. The current parasites mainly rely on droplet transmission. It would take extensive time to alter the transmission route. I eventually... You gotta extract him. ...the FB Cleanser's project had been shut down. It was Skullface who put it back into operation. But despite that, he told me to forget about the transmission route and just focus on language identification. I do not know why. I understand that the Chinese philosophers who discovered the relative species of parasite originally planned to develop a phonogrammic Alexia parasite. The left temporal parietal region is home to the part of the brain that identifies the phonetic symbols of the English language. They wished to create a strain that would parasitize that region and suppress its literacy functions. The brain area responsible for identifying the logographs of Chinese, meanwhile, is in the left... Okay, subject is in. Meaning that even if native speakers of Chinese were infected with the parasite, the literacy would be unaffected. Old and new, east and west, there is no limit to the delusions of those in power. But this delusion threatens to become a reality. I have to do something to stop this. There must be something I can do.
Find a hot zone. Come on! of the enemy. Mission complete, boss. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Mission complete. Great work. has been extremely cooperative. The guys on the R&D team are glad to have him aboard. Thing is, his specialty is in mechanics, but something called bionics, engineering based on biology. He's already submitted a proposal for modifying your prosthetic arm. If you're interested, go ahead and give the development order. There's been another outbreak of the vocal cord parasites on the base. Several men are dead. It started in the laboratory on the quarantine platform where the radiation leak occurred. I'd only just deployed the security team. I've sent in a rescue team to help, but they haven't returned. Boss, I need you on this. Come back to Mother Base ASAP. <laughs> 